All right, we're going around the entire boat here and we're inspecting every screw hole and we're just out to make sure there isn't any foreign material that's squeezed up around the screw heads and stuck to the wood around the hole or stuck to the top of the screw head like the polysulfide that we used to bed it down with because we did rub some into the screws threads before we put them in and uh, they have a little tendency to pollute the hole a little bit so uh, and we've got a little half inch spade bit right here and it's about the easiest tool there is to hold on to because it's nice and flat and it doesn't rotate in your fingertips and uh, that makes it as easy as it can get and we're just using that spade bit to scrape every bit of foreign material out of there and then we have to scrape back and forth in the slots and all the way around the hole and just make sure we sever the bond of that polysulfide where it's stuck to the wood around the screw hole. Now we haven't drilled those heads down in there very deep. The holes aren't very deep. We've done that on purpose because I don't want to drill away a whole bunch of material. I decided not to drill the holes out to a half an inch in diameter and maybe three-eighths of an inch deep. That's what would be required for a number 12 screw head and uh, we've decided that the thing to do is just clean them up really nice and uh, fill them with a farin compound. We're going to be using Jamestown Distributors Total Boat Total Fair. It's a two-part epoxy farin compound. Now this is the resin right here and this is the hardener right here. The hardener is obviously a different color than the resin. It's blue and the resin is yellow. Now all we have to do is just mix two equal parts of that together. So all we have to do is we'll put our hardener away and take a putty knife and just dig out a little scoop like that. And uh, there's no telling how much that thing weighs or what size that is or otherwise, but I can see what size it is. And I'm just going to stick it down there. And then I'm going to go into the hardener right here and do exactly the same thing. I'm just going to take a little scoop like that. And that looks approximately the same size. Maybe I'll put a little tiny bit more out there. And then I'm going to mix those two batches together. And I'm going to surround it here a little bit and get it in one pile and then spread it and uh, you can see it mixing together the yellow and the blue and what happens is it ends up green when you get it mixed just right so now it's getting a little bit big on my spatula here on my mixing board so I'm going to surround it again here and just dig it up into one pile again and set it down mix it again so I'm going to do this three or four times until you can't see the difference in colors in there. But like I said, as you do it, it kind of spreads out and this system doesn't work so good. So what you do is then you scoop it up again like that. Just about any way you want and get it in one pile on your knife, set it back down. It all ends up in one spot again and you can see it just starting to blend together there. Now, maybe a cook could do something really, really cool with this, but this is the way I go about it right here. Now I'm going to mix what was on the back side of that knife into it. Pick it up again. That looks pretty good. Now I'm going to come around and I'm going to work from right to left because I can't really work very well from my left to my right. What happens is I start puttying the holes from left to right and I end up with my left sleeve all in it because I tend to lean all over the boat like this, especially when I'm doing the side. So I can't do that. I have to start up forward. I'll do some on the bottom and then I'm going to do some on the forward on the sides and work my way right back and I'm going to do the bottom and the sides at the same time and all of a sudden I'll be done. So I'm going to pick up a little bit of putty right here and I'm going to start right at the very front here and uh, I'm going to sweep it on there kind of sideways like that and then I'm going to make a little thing like that you see. Now you have to be aware of where that hole is in order to be able to fill one like that. Now you got to pick up just the right amount of putty and get it right on the end of your knife like that, crowded right up near the end there. That makes it easier to handle. You don't want it spread all over the knife and all over both sides. You want one side fairly clean and all the putty on the other side. Now what I'm going to do with it is I'm going to use that kind of sideways. Now I'm just going to stroke that 
putty across that hole like that. Now, I don't have it all over the place. I've got a good portion of it in the hole, and I'm going to make sure it goes in the hole because I'm going to push it like so. Now, I'm going to go right across the whole thing, and you have to be aware of where that hole is. And there's the edge of the hole. Now, I'm going to apply a little pressure. You see, and it made a little hump right there. Now, I know there's enough putty right there to fill that hole no matter what. Now, I can fill the next hole exactly the same way. Look at that, filled up pretty nice. But I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to go across the hole, find the edge, apply a little pressure, and get a little hump there. Now, while I'm here, maybe I'll just clean that up a little bit like so. Now, I'm going to go back to the board and get a little bit more. And again, we're going to keep it right near the end of the knife, just like that. One clean side and one side with the putty on it. And uh, when it's put on the knife like that, it makes it that much easier to handle. Now, let's go over to the hole here. Now, I can go either direction I want to go. And I'm just going that direction with one filling. And now I'm going to go this direction with the other. Now, they're not quite topped off. But I'm going to do this one first, and I'm going to find the edge of that hole, then apply a little pressure. And you can see the putty mound right up just like that. Now I can scrape off that excess if I want, just like so. I can put that in this hole over here like that. I'm going to do the same exact thing over here. I'm going to find the edge of the hole, press down, and there it is. Got a little bubble right there. So I'm just going to clean up here up forward. And before I get too carried away, I'm going to work my way up forward here. And I'm going to do a little bit of work on the sides. Now, I've picked up the putty again, just the right amount. Now, here we are right up forward here. I'm going to fill that hole right there, just like that. Now, I'm going to swipe across it, but I'm going to wait till I see that hole come into view, just like that. And then I'm going to push on it, and I'll get like a little bump right there. Now, let me fill another one. Same way, just like that. So now we're going to just continue along filling the holes here. And we're not going to just put globs of it on. We're going to try to use as little as possible and spread it out as nice and neatly as possible so that it's much easier for us to clean it up afterwards. There just isn't any sense in using a huge volume of it. We're just going to have to turn it all into dust if we do something like that. And uh, I'll go back to the board again, get a little bit more, swipe it across sideways. That's worked pretty nice. Look at that one. That one worked just exactly right. Once you get going at it, you get a little bit better at it. You kind of have to develop like a little technique like that, you see. And then you've got, some, you've got it going on there. Now I'm going to fill that one twice and then swipe it again. Just like that. That works great. A little bit more for the next one. Fill it. Find it. Pressurize it. Just like that. We're going to finish filling the holes on the top sides and the bottom planking on the port side here with total fair because it works equally as well above and below the water line. And uh, you can see that it's really not a whole lot of work. And we're just going to let it finish drying overnight so that it's nice and dry the next day before we start removing the excess. It's the next morning and our total fair is totally dry, just like I said it was going to be. And uh, it's ready to work, so you could sand it down or anything you want, but we're going to use a scraper. And there's some technique involved with using the scraper here. You kind of want to double diagonal scrape it. I'm holding the scraper blade kind of 45 degrees to the angle that I'm pulling it at. And uh, then I'm switching back and forth, and I'm trying to avoid getting it hung up on any lumps or putty that's on there. So once the higher points are taken down, then it gets much easier. And uh, the scraper's got to be very, very sharp, like I said, but uh, we just take care of that right here on the scene with a file, and uh, off we go. It's pretty much a pleasure to do it this way. You can see how quick it scrapes down there. There's just a few strokes, and it's almost knocked down, and uh, you don't put much pressure on it. You just kind of skid over it really nice and neat so you can see what you're going to get and make sure that you don't have any fetches there before you start adding any pressure to really scrape off that last little bit of excess and uh, I don't even try to get that last little bit of staining out of the wood. You can't even feel it when you rub across it but you can see a stain that's still involved on there and we're going to reserve that for sanding. So we're just scraping our way along up forward here and that one worked out pretty quick. Last few strokes. I'll move my way down. That one went real fast. Another one gone. There still is some stain in there, but not very much. And uh, I can make a stroke or two more, but 
stain is down in the wood. It's like a pencil line buried down in there. Just like that pencil line, you kind of have to go after it to get it out of there. And uh, I don't want to just scrape a big hole in it. So we're going to sand it. We're going to get that out when we fair the whole thing. So this really works good. The last thing in the world I would want to do would be use like a random orbital sander because what happens is you got the thing that you're trying to remove underneath there and you can't see what you're doing and you're sanding a hole all the way around it or you move your sander over to the edge and try to concentrate on it right there and you just dig a hole on both sides of it and it's just a mess. I don't like doing it. I'd rather use a tool. I'm a real tool guy and the tool really works great. We're just finishing up scraping on the port side right now and we're going to shift over to the bottom plank in here and uh, we've got quite a few spots here that we can show you uh, how easy it really is. It's a totally different kind of wood so it works a little bit differently the way you handle the scraper but as long as you go across the grain there's probably less chance of you digging this up than there is of digging up the cedar so this works just equally as well if not better and it's not going to take us any time at all and we'll be done in no time flat. Here. Now we're going to start sanding. Now I'm going to use 220 sandpaper here, which is pretty light sandpaper, but I don't feel the need to use anything rougher because I'm not trying to scratch the boat up, I'm trying to smooth it up at the same time. And uh, this paper here, you can really feel all the different uh, detectable lumps or any kind of grade problems or anything under the paper, even under this block. So I'm going to go over it with this block for a little while here. Again, you'll notice that the total fare has left a stain all the way around the holes there. It just means that it's sinking into the wood really good and it's got a hold of it really, really nicely. But, you know, we don't want to leave too much of it on there because when you prime it, it'll prime out a little different looking around the holes. You can't even feel it, but we're going to sand most of that off while we're grading out the rest of it. You can hear it. That's the electric cleaner marks that are left by the electric cleaner, but they're all so, so very consistent with each other that you sand over them a little bit and uh, you can feel them disappear and you can hear them disappear. So it's kind of like a aid to grading, right? Now I'm up forward here and I've shifted over to a much more flexible sanding pad because the flat block, you can feel it drag in the corners because the hull has a little bit of a twist to it. So this works out a little bit better and uh, you can just really feel it cutting. It cuts great. And it's just a little uh, spatula there with some uh, paper wrapped around it and it works great. I can cross hatch with it, like I said before, real nice. You can feel the cross hatching when you do it. When you shift over, you can immediately feel that it drags a little bit different when you know you're cutting from wood. Every time you shift over, it feels different. Now I'm up in here. And diagonal like that. And I'll shift back this way. Now you don't get those corner drag marks that the block was leaving, the other block. And then I'm just going to finish it up just nice and fore and aft like that. And I think if you get a feel of that, you'd be surprised how nice and smooth that is. 